Hello stranger! I know, I know I'm sorry. It's been a while since I've been on YouTube, but there is a very good reason. One, I've been moving house. Two, I've had the man flu. <coughs> Two and three, I've been filming a ton of stuff for the new series, which is going to be coming in November, which granted is awesome for then, but not so great for now because I can't show you the stuff I'm filming now because otherwise it'd ruin it for later. But the little gap in time is going to mean you're going to have a flurry of videos coming your way in November with that new series, which is going to be taking a look at a fight life, functional fitness kind of style with some crazy goals along the way. But. For now, I'm back with an all-important video because winter is around the corner. The autumnal season is here. Pumpkins are in the store next to chocolate reindeer. And that can mean only one thing. Do we decide to bulk, cut, maintain, join a cult? Hopefully I'll help you out. So let's start off with the main thing here and that is what is your focus? Do you actually want to get bigger or do you want to see your abs? This is something you need to decide because you can't do both. You gotta pick one, getting leaner or getting bigger. But you don't have to get fat to get big and you don't have to lose muscle to get shredded. And I'm gonna cover that right now and help you simplify things down so that you know where you wanna be this winter. So let's start with bulking, because everyone's going to be talking about this with winter around the corner. What a lot of people do is they'll think, I want to get bigger, which means bulking, which means calories, which then means pizza cookies and ice cream. But all in the wrong quantities, because a lot of people have this habit of going into a bulking mode where they'll just eat and eat and eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all well and good and fun, but if you're eating without structure and without control, what that means is that you don't have any control over the number of calories going in, in a day. You don't have control of the breakdown of those calories. And that means you're going to put on excessive fat, which means later down the line, you have to lose that fat, which is going to suck. Factor number two of going on a dirty bulk is the fact that you're kind of eating just relentlessly and you're not really eating to any structure. So then when you go from that to have to go into a cutting phase, which is going to be rigid, strict and require constant monitoring, you're probably going to hate life. It's going to be hard because you've not had that structure previously and chances of you falling off the wagon, failing, quitting, having a bad day are going to increase exponentially. So what's the solution to this? My solution, or what I would advise all of you to think about, is doing a lean gain. What's a lean gain, Lex? Why have you never heard of this thing before? Lean gaining is much slower and probably less fun than eating eight pizzas a day, but what it does mean, the gains that you make are gonna be real and they're gonna be low fat gains, meaning most of the gains aren't gonna be fat. They're gonna be more water retention, glucose retention, and hopefully, muscle, muscle. You see, what we do on a lean gain is simple. You increase your calories so that you go into a surplus compared to your lifestyle and activities, which you need to know. Once you know the maintenance level for that lifestyle, increase your daily calories by starting out just 250 extra calories a day. You weigh yourself over a seven day period, taking an average of that seven day period. You then carry on into the next week, you measure the two averages together and you see if your weight's gone up, down or stayed the same. If your weight has gone up, you do not need to increase your food because you are gaining weight. If you increase food whilst you're already gaining, you're going to go into an excess surplus which your body only has one solution to, tubby tubby fat fat. So what we do is a stepped method and this applies also to dieting but I'll cover that in the cutting section of this video a little bit later on. If you've liked what I've done so far, don't forget to hit that like button right now. Give it a little tinkle and if you've got any questions, start in the comment section, go. I'll be answering them kind of live. So the stepped fashion we're looking at here is once your weight plateaus from one average to the next, then you add in another 250 calories and you wait until it plateaus again, then add in and so on and so forth. So we end up with this stepped technique. This means that you are growing slowly, allowing your body to adapt, helping to build that metabolism, because that is another part of what we want to achieve when we're gaining. We want to build our metabolism. What we want to do is get the metabolism used to dealing with a higher level of calorie intake. We want to put those calories to use by maintaining a consistent training regime and activity level. If either of those differ or dip, you need to bring your calories down alongside it. Otherwise, you're going to jump over that surplus that you've created that's usable and go back into that excess. So that to make sense, it's all about that balance. 
By doing things this way, what you should see is an increase in fullness of the muscles. You should still see some maintenance of definition and minimal fat gaining. Plus, it gives you that control to when you look in the mirror and you start to not like what you're seeing, to halt, stop, and know exactly where you are and what you can adjust. You can also try flipping things around. Maybe if you've gone high on carbs, maybe bring those carbs down, but bring the fats up, keeping calories the same. See if your body reacts better that way. There's no one perfect way of doing this, guys. You have to try things, and it all takes a little bit of time. Unfortunately, I don't make the rules. That's mother nature. But understand, if you're thinking eight to 12 weeks, quit it. You need to start thinking, months and years. This is not days and weeks. Gaining is a slow process, but if you do it properly, if you do it correctly and you do it in a monitored fashion, those gains will be real. They won't just be water and fat, and you will not have to always wear a jumper just to look like you look good. Moving on to people who might want to cut. So you might want to be seeing those apps during the winter phases. Maybe you live in Australia and you're coming into your summer and you want to start cutting up. Here's what my advice would be for that. If you're starting out as well, I'd like to add in here, this is my advice to start by cutting away the crap, which also means going into a deficit, going into a cutting phase. But again, a monitored and controlled one. Positive, critical mindset is super important. Looking at something you think, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna make it better. Plus, when you see improvements in those weaknesses, I promise you, you're gonna feel freaking awesome for it. So by stripping down or going into a cutting phase, we're gonna really show what's underneath. By cutting away unnecessary weight or bad weight and taking ourselves down to the basic frame that we are, the kind of roundabout where you can just see your abs, that's a decent level of leanness. At that point, you'll be able to really see where your strengths and more importantly, where your weaknesses lie. You need to look at yourself in a positive, critical state. That means taking a look at yourself and deciding, this isn't the best on me and I'm gonna fucking improve it. Not looking at yourself and going, oh, that sucks. Oh, my genetic to rubbish. Oh, I wish I started earlier. Oh, I wish I could fly and lived in a lamp like a genie. So, how do we go into such a cutting phase? You're gonna do the same things you do for the lean gain in that stepped mechanism. You're gonna use a monitored diet, so you're gonna to need to know where your maintenance levels are and where your activity levels are. What you don't wanna be doing is throwing all your cardio in this at once. What a lot of people tend to do is they tend to cut food, increase cardio, and go balls out, then they burn out, fall off, order a Domino's, and they eat the Domino's every day, and then they end up getting tubby. So what you're going to do is you're going to num num feed the fat loss. That's right, feed it. The goal of losing weight is to eat as much as possible while still dropping weight on the scales and looking better in the mirror. So what we need is to know the maintenance level and your activities. Once you have this, what you're gonna do is stay at maintenance and you're gonna increase your activity levels. Use that cardio and that activity time, which again you need to be monitoring, as a way to increase calorie output, which will then put you in a deficit that you are monitoring. Keep your sports in, keep your running in, swimming, playing out with mates at football, soccer, Sunday leagues, whatever it may be, fight classes, go and join one. If you are fitter, you're a better machine, you'll be able to deal with more food and more calories, which is gonna make you happier. You're gonna be able to deal with days off, days missed, and sickness and illness. And that goes for gaining or cutting phases. Once your cardio is at a maximum level as you like, that's enough of that shit, then you can start bringing the food levels down. Keep that protein dominant, but then between the carbs and the fats, it's up to you. Personally, I've gone high fat, lower carb. Now it's not keto because I'm still on 150 grams of carbs, but I'm following that alongside with 150 grams of fat. Prior to this at my maintenance levels, I was at around about three to 400 grams of carbohydrate and around 60 to 70 fat. So a real flip, but I've found that it has curbed hunger, it's helped my temperament stay more leveled out because I'm not having those crashes. And in the gym, I do look a little bit less kind of bloaty. I look a little bit drier. And during the day, I'm not having those moments where when I eat my meals, I'm getting distended stomach from all the carbohydrate intake. So for me, the high fat has been fantastic. It's curbed my sweet tooth. And to snack on things like nuts and everything like that, that a small volume high impact also helps me get my meals in because I'm a notorious under eater. So if you're an under eater for gaining or cutting, this is going to help you. Putting in more calories through fats is going to be easier because you get over double the calories per gram with fats than you do for carbs. What you're looking for is those seven day averages. 
you're gonna weigh in seven days, clock each weight. You're not gonna care what it is, you're just gonna log it down, you're gonna take an average of your weight over the week. You do the same for your second week. If your weight has gone down, then you keep everything the same. You only change when things plateau. And once things plateau, your choice is up your activity or drop the food. Personally, I would always go for up the activity until you get to that maximal point, then start playing with the food. But we're gonna go for that stepped mechanism, but rather than going up the staircase, we're gonna be going down the staircase. So once you plateau out, then you up cardio or drop food until you see that drop in weight. Then when that plateau occurs again, that's what you do. That little step, that little reduction, activity up or food down, but not both, because then you're losing control. But in conclusion to this video, it's about what you want to see in the mirror. It doesn't matter what season it is, what your friends tell you you need to be doing. It's about how you feel. That's what this lifestyle and training is all about. If when you look in the mirror, you don't mind seeing a bigger, bulkier guy and you don't mind those abs disappearing, then fine, go on that gaining phase and maybe be a little excessive with your calories and enjoy some of those heavier days. Just understand that that cutting phase is going to be a little bit more difficult as a result. If, however, you're like me and you don't like that kind of higher body fat level, I tried it, I just didn't like what I saw in the mirror and I didn't like the way it made me feel heavy. Go for that lean gain, go for a slower approach. Then once you get to a certain size that you enjoy, then just look about getting fitter, more functional, really utilizing the muscle that's on your frame rather than maybe focusing too much on getting bigger. Gains. Now, no one needs to be shredded 365 days a year. It's not really possible, but you can consistently see your abs all year round. There's no doubt about it. You're just not gonna have that same level of cuts and striations as you would in those deficit days. Again, remember all of this. The gym, the diet, it goes around your life. Don't make it your life. Go out and have fun with your friends. Have knowledge of the food that you're eating and that's gonna help you be free. Which is why I would say don't do that dirty bulk because just by eating anything and everything, you're not building a knowledge of food. All you're building is a belly. I hope that's enlightened you a little bit and given you some little ways to think about what you might want to do. If you have any questions or something's confused you or have missed something, hit me up in the comment section below. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the notifications to make sure that you don't fall short of seeing the new series launching in November and all the videos I will now be posting considering I am now moved, settled and don't have gerbil internet anymore. That's right, I can upload a video on the same day that I make it and it will actually go live. Woohoo! Thank you all very much for watching. I've been Lex, I'll catch you in the next video. And you might also notice there's a new little friend in town. Mm -mm -mm. Guess who's coming back? Tell them bounce if they never seen an ounce of the raw. If you need one, hit me up, I know who to call. I don't do the mall, everything custom. Shorty ass.